Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Endocrine System. This is Lecture B, Other Organs in the Endocrine System. The objectives for the endocrine system are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the endocrine system, describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the endocrine system, The pituitary gland, also known as the hypophysis, is a small gland about one centimeter in diameter, located at the base of the skull in a depression of the sphenoid bone known as the cella tersica. The gland is connected to the hypothalamus of the brain by a slender stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland is also known as the master gland because it produces or secretes a variety of hormones that are transported through the body and direct other glands to produce their hormones. The following is a list of hormones produced in the pituitary gland, along with a brief description of their functions. Prolactin is responsible for the development of breasts in females and lactation after birth. Growth hormone, or GH, is responsible for generating the growth and development of bones and other tissues in our body. Adrenocorticotropin, or ACTH, promotes the release of cortisol, another hormone, which is produced by the adrenal glands. Thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, promotes the release of hormones from the thyroid gland and assists in the regulation of metabolic processes in our body. Antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, assists with the regulation of water absorption, preventing us from losing excessive amounts of water in urination. Luteinizing hormone, or LH, assists in the regulation or secretion of the hormone estrogen in females and testosterone in males. Follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, assists the reproductive organs, the testes and ovaries, in the production of sperm in males and ova in females. With pituitary disorders, you often have too much or too little of one of your hormones. Injuries can cause pituitary disorders, but the most common cause is a pituitary tumor. As we have learned, the pituitary gland makes growth hormone, which stimulates the growth of bone and other tissues. Children who have too little of it may be very short. A dwarf is a person of short stature, under 4 feet 10 inches as an adult. More than 200 different conditions can cause dwarfism. A single type, achondroplasia, is responsible for approximately 70% of all dwarfism. Dwarfism is not a disease. Treatment with growth hormone can stimulate growth. With proper medical care, most people with dwarfism have active lives and live as long as other people. Individuals can also have too much growth hormone. Usually, the cause is a pituitary tumor, but not a cancerous one. Too much growth hormone can cause gigantism in children, where their bones and their body grow too much. In adults, too much GH results in acromegaly, in which the hands, feet, and face are larger than normal. Diabetes insipidus, or DI, causes frequent urination. A person becomes extremely thirsty and drinks. The drinking results in frequent urination, and a cycle of drinking and urinating can prevent adequate sleep and even encourage bedwetting. The body produces large volumes of urine, almost all water. DI is different from diabetes mellitus, which is abbreviated DM. DM is related to the lack of production and or the body's use of insulin. While the symptoms can be similar, DI is related to how your kidneys handle fluids in the body. It is less common than DM. Diagnostic tests on urine and blood can determine which condition you have. Usually, DI is caused by a problem with your pituitary gland or your kidneys. 
Treatment depends on the cause of the problem. Medicines can often help. Pituitary tumors are fairly common. Statistics indicate that about 1 in 10,000 persons will develop a pituitary tumor. Pituitary tumors grow slowly, do not spread, and are usually not cancerous. The most common type of pituitary tumor produces hormones and affects the balance of the hormones in the body. This type of tumor may result in conditions such as Cushing's syndrome and hyperthyroidism. Symptoms of pituitary tumors include vision problems, nausea and vomiting, and other problems caused by the overproduction of hormones. Pituitary tumors are generally curable. Treatment is often surgery to remove the tumor. Other treatment options include medications, radiation, or radiosurgery. Physicians conduct a variety of clinical tests to diagnose pituitary disorders and diseases. Examples of these tests include adrenocorticohormone, aldosterone and renin test, follicle-stimulating hormone test, growth hormone test, insulin-like growth factor 1 test, luteinizing hormone test, and magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, of the head, which is a radiological examination. Let's move now to the pineal gland. The pineal gland, also called the pineal body or epiphysis cerebri, is a small cone-shaped structure that extends posteriorly from the third ventricle of the brain. The pineal gland consists of portions of neurons, neuroglial cells, and specialized secretory cells called pineolocytes. The pineolocytes synthesize the hormone melatonin and secrete it directly into the cerebrospinal fluid, which takes it into the bloodstream. Melatonin affects reproductive development and daily physiologic cycles. The fifth gland that we will study in this lecture is the thyroid gland. The thyroid is a very vascular organ that is located in the neck on either side of the trachea. It consists of two lobes just below the larynx or voice box. The two lobes are connected by a narrow band of tissue called the isthmus. The thyroid gland helps set your metabolism, how your body gets energy from the foods you eat. Parathyroid glands are four small masses of epithelial tissue embedded in the connective tissue capsule on the posterior surface of the thyroid glands. The parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone, or parathormone. Parathyroid hormone is the most important regulator of blood calcium levels. When the blood calcium level is low, the hormone is secreted or released to increase those levels. Internally, the thyroid gland consists of follicles which produce thyroxin and triiodothyronine hormones. These hormones contain iodine. About 95% of the active thyroid hormone is thyroxin, and most of the remaining 5% is triiodothyronine. Both of these require iodine for their synthesis. If there is an iodine deficiency, the thyroid cannot make sufficient hormone. This stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, which causes the thyroid gland to increase in size in an attempt to produce more hormones. But it cannot produce more hormones because it does not have the raw material, iodine. This type of thyroid enlargement is called simple goiter, or iodine deficiency goiter. Millions of people in the U.S. have thyroid diseases. Most of them are women. If you have a thyroid disease, your body uses energy more slowly or more quickly than it should. There are four main types of thyroid disease. If your thyroid is too active, it is called hyperthyroidism. 
your thyroid makes more thyroid hormones than your body needs. Symptoms include weight loss, increased heart rate, and sensitivity to heat. A thyroid gland that is not active enough results in a condition called hypothyroidism. Symptoms include weight gain, fatigue, and difficulty with cold temperatures. There are many causes for both of these conditions. Treatment involves trying to reset your body's metabolism to a normal rate. The other two main diseases are benign, which means non-cancerous thyroid disease, and thyroid cancer. The risk factors for thyroid cancer include being between 25 and 65, being a woman, being Asian, having a family member who has had thyroid disease, and having radiation treatment to your head and neck. Symptoms include a lump or swelling in your neck. Tests can be ordered to see if you have cancer. Treatment, depending on the type and how far the cancer has spread, might include surgery, radioactive iodine, hormone treatment, radiation therapy, or chemotherapy. Some patients receive a combination of treatments. Now let's look at the endocrine organs of the reproductive system. We will start with the ovaries. Two groups of female sex hormones are produced in the ovaries, estrogen and progesterone. These steroid hormones contribute to the development and function of the female reproductive organs and the development of the secondary sexual characteristics. At the onset of puberty, estrogen promotes the development of the breasts, distribution of fat evidenced in the hips, legs, and breasts, and maturation of reproductive organs, such as the uterus and vagina. Progesterone causes the uterine lining to thicken in preparation for pregnancy. Together, progesterone and estrogen are responsible for the changes that occur in the uterus during the female menstrual cycle. Examples of disorders in the female reproductive system include amenorrhea, premature ovarian failure, premenstrual syndrome, dysfunctional uterine bleeding, ectopic pregnancy, polycystic ovary syndrome, uterine fibroids. Amenorrhea occurs when a woman does not begin menstruation by age 16 or she experiences an absence of menses for three months and is not pregnant. Amenorrhea is not a disease, but a symptom of a disorder. In ovarian failure, a woman's ovaries stop producing hormones before she is age 40. This disorder results in infertility. There is no treatment that will restore normal ovarian function when this disorder occurs. However, Estrogen replacement therapy may allow women to have regular periods and lower the risk for osteoporosis. 
Premenstrual syndrome, also referred to as PMS, is a group of symptoms that start one to two weeks before a female begins her period. Most women have at least some symptoms of PMS, and these symptoms usually go away after their period begins. Treatments include over-the-counter pain relievers, exercising, getting enough sleep, and avoiding salt, caffeine, and alcohol. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding is abnormal uterine bleeding that is not associated with a physical lesion such as a tumor, inflammation, or pregnancy. Treatment will depend on several factors, the cause of the bleeding, your age, and if you want to have children. Hormones may be prescribed. Diagnostic tests may include ultrasound, endometrial biopsy, hysteroscopy, dilation and curatage, and laparoscopy to determine the exact cause. An ectopic pregnancy occurs when gestation takes place elsewhere than in the uterus, such as the fallopian tube or in the peritoneal cavity. Ectopic pregnancies require surgery to remove the pregnancy to save the mother's life. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a disorder that is marked by amenorrhea, which is the absence of menstruation. Other symptoms include obesity, infertility, ovarian enlargement, and hirsutism, which means excessive growth of hair. It usually begins with an elevated level of luteinizing hormone, androgen or estrogen, which results in an abnormal cycle of gonadotropin released by the pituitary gland. This is also referred to as polycystic ovary disease, or Stein-Leventhal syndrome. Treatment recommendations include weight loss, medications such as birth control pills, or progesterone, and medications that increase the body's sensitivity to insulin. Uterine fibroids are the most common non-cancerous tumors in women of childbearing age. Treatment may include medications for pain relief but in some cases, surgical treatment of the fibroids may be indicated. The testes function as an endocrine gland. The testes are where the male sex hormones are produced. These hormones are referred to as androgens. Testosterone is the main hormone secreted by the testes. The testes begin to secrete testosterone during fetal development. At puberty, Testosterone is responsible for the growth and development of male reproductive structures, increased skeletal and muscular growth, enlargement of the larynx, growth and distribution of body hair, and increased male sexual drive. Anorchia is the absence of both testes at birth. Symptoms include the failure to begin puberty at the correct time and the lack of secondary sex characteristics. Treatments include artificial testicle implants, male hormones, and psychological support. Hypogonadotropic hypogonadism is absent or decreased function of the male testes. It is considered a form of secondary hypogonadism, which means the condition is due to a problem with the pituitary or hypothalamus gland. Symptoms include the absence of secondary sex characteristics, such as pubic, facial, and underarm hair, inability to smell, delayed development at puberty, underdeveloped testicles, and, in some cases, short stature. Treatment depends on the cause of the disorder, but may include injections of testosterone, slow-release testosterone skin patch, GNRH injections, and testosterone gels. With the correct hormone treatment, the patient can begin puberty. Reifenstein syndrome is one of a group of diseases in which the body is unable to respond appropriately to the male sex hormones, which include testosterone. Symptoms include abnormal male genitals, breast development in males at the time of puberty, infertility, and decreased body hair and beard, but normal pubic and armpit hair. Treatment with testosterone improves the chance that the patient will have a normal and healthy lifespan with the potential to have children. In addition to the major endocrine glands, 
other organs have some hormonal activity as part of their function. One of these is the thymus gland. The thymus is a small organ in your upper chest, under your breastbone. Before birth and during childhood, the thymus helps the body make a type of white blood cell. These cells help protect you from infections. The thymus gland produces thymosin, a hormone that plays an important role in the development of the body's immune system. Cancer of the thymus is rare. You are more likely to develop it if you have other diseases such as myasthenia gravis, lupus, or rheumatoid arthritis. Sometimes there are no symptoms. Other times, thymus cancer can cause a cough that doesn't go away, chest pain, or trouble breathing. The most common treatment is surgery to remove the tumor. Other options include radiation and hormone therapy. Here are some key word parts for the endocrine system, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Now see if you can use what you learned. A patient is referred by her primary care physician to the endocrine clinic because she has recent weight loss, an increased heart rate, and has noticed that she is very sensitive to heat. Which of the disorders of thyroid gland should he test for? Did you guess hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism occurs when your thyroid is too active. It makes more thyroid hormones than your body needs. That condition is referred to as hyperthyroidism. The symptoms include weight loss, increased heart rate, and sensitivity to heat. This concludes the endocrine system. In summary, we have discussed the medical terms related to the endocrine system and described common diseases and conditions and an overview of various treatments related to the endocrine system.